Can I ask how you kind of, or who introduced you to drugs, just out of interest? Yeah, so drugs in general, weed was my dad. Because <laughs> um, he used to want to, he'd rather I smoke with him than go and smoke with others. With drink, it was, I don't know, it's like when we used to go to family parties and stuff like that, you should just like have a little bit of drinks and stuff like that. With the harder stuff though, that was like a person I was seeing at the time. Okay, right. Because I would never have, that's what I'm saying, drink was my thing. I would never have gone to the other stuff if somebody didn't say, oh, here. I was just easily led. I was too fast. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was mainly, it was mainly drink. It was mainly alcohol. But then somebody would say, oh, here, try this. Then, because I'm nosy, then um, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll try anything once. I just felt like I was so naive, especially because we lived like, a sheltered life. We like, but inside, so I wasn't very... I say I was streetwise, like I knew how to get around, but when it comes to drugs and stuff like that, I just wasn't um, really clued up. And because me, I've got that addictive thing where it's like I can't stop once I start. So that was the annoying thing. I'd love to be able to have a puff in the sun, but it just wasn't my experience. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people have like addictive personalities. Yeah. But I feel like you have a quite a positive message. Yeah. Um, so if we can, you know, show the video in a way that, you yeah. know, what you've come from and where you've gone with it. And yeah. then, and then obviously the positive message, which is an yeah, outcome. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I could have ended up inside and I'm luckily, luckily I didn't end up inside. But it is good now to be able to give something back so that, like I said, going into Brixton on Saturday. And I always used to think, oh God, going into a men's prison, which I love. Oh, they're going to... Take my trainers. No, not really. <laughs> no, um, I love going into Brixton and do it. That's my favourite bit of service. Like when they say doing service, it means like in the group you've got different positions, like either the secretary or the literature person or the greeter or or people that do the readings or the person that does the chair, like shares their their ish, their experience, strength and hope. So that's my favourite bit, like going in and taking the message into the people that can't get out and. The real rewarding bit is when they come out into the meetings and you see them in the meeting and think, oh yeah, I remember you like from Brixton Prison. It happened to me the other day, I went to a CA meeting, which is a, um, another fellowship meeting. And um, yeah, the guy recognised me from coming in and he was saying, oh thanks, like, you're the reason why I came. Or, yeah, so it's good when you, when you can see that something you've said has brought somebody has made them continue on their journey. Because like I said, it's not everyone's interested. Some people you can, some people just do it so they can get out of their cell for a few hours or or so they maybe they're short, they might shorten their sentence. But um, but more times, it's, it's really good to see that people inside want to get well, definitely. Because there was a lot going on with this spice stuff as well. I mean, I've never had that. I'm thinking about all these things that I'm not going to be able to try now that I'm a teetotaler. <laughs> but um, all these new drinks that they've got, but um, for me, I just feel like, um, yeah, I just always remember the jails, institutions, death, or for me, life and recovery. That's the, that's the best choice that I could make for me today. And I've just got to make that living amend by not going back. It's so, like I said, especially times like now, it's so, um, if I don't keep up what I'm doing, because some people, they, like, they go to the meetings or they don't go to the meetings and then they think that old voice comes back saying, oh, it's a good idea to go and take a drink and then they can't get back. But for me, I just have to stay connected. Like sometimes I think it's like the mafia, it's like blood in and blood out. If I don't do this stuff, I'm gonna end up relapsing. And I never wanna relapse, I never wanna go back. I've seen what it does to people. Like I said, I have my friend that I lost and, and she's not gonna be the last either. It's like, it happens a lot where people like think they can get a handle on it again and then they go off and then they don't come back. So. For me, I'm sticking around. I say, if you're new, fart and glue. Stick around, be a boomerang, keep coming back. And I used to hate it, oh, keep coming back, keep coming back. I'm gonna keep coming back because I know what it's like um, if I don't carry on this stuff. I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why would I think that I'm gonna be able to manage? I, it's like, sometimes I like doing things like Frank Sinatra my way, but I just think I've got to listen to somebody else who's got a bit more experience and see what worked for them. If it worked for them, it can definitely work for me. I'm not special and different, so. So yeah, it's just trying to stay on that road, stay on the path, stay on the path, like no matter what. I don't have to part of the no matter what club today. I don't have to go back to old coping mechanisms. <laughs>